Safe Storage. Let's look into recommended housing, stacking, and shelving options for storing items and archival materials. It is important to ensure that items are stored correctly because we are stewards for the materials in our care and their safety is a priority. When we ensure that each item is stored in the best way possible, we can minimize some of the risk and potential damage that they might otherwise experience. Providing adequate housing is an integral part of protecting items in storage. Just as homes provide shelter for us from the elements, proper housing offers a buffer against pests, dust, disaster and emergency events, and other environmental factors. The first type of housing we will cover is boxes. Not only do boxes protect items from the environment, they allow for items to be handled and stored more safely. There are a number of sizes and types of standard boxes, such as Hollinger boxes, Banker's boxes, and flat storage boxes. These boxes can come pre-assembled or pre-scored and cut to be assembled as needed. Storage boxes should be archival, meaning they are neutral or alkaline buffered regarding their pH. Acidic boxes will only contribute to the natural deterioration of the items. If there is extra space in an upright box, spacers can be constructed from archival board. It is relatively simple to construct custom boxes from large archival boards when standard sizes don't match the item size. When a box cannot be made, wrapping a book or object in Tyvek is another way to protect it from any dust and water. The next types of housing we'll go over are folders and sleeves. Any loose or unbound flat items such as documents, maps, photographs, prints, and drawings should be placed into folders or sleeves before they are put away into a box or drawer. Folders keep items organized and provide support and protection for the items while they are in storage and when they are handled. Sleeves can be made from archival paper or board or from an archival polyester such as Mylar or Melanex. Non-archival folders and sleeves contain additives and coatings that will eventually cause harm and should therefore be avoided. Each item and its individual needs should be considered when selecting appropriate housing. Items with friable media, meaning powdery or flaking, like charcoal or pastel, shouldn't be placed into a mylar sleeve since the static created could lift and smear the media. Mylar sleeves are ideal for items with multiple pieces or numerous tears because of the static in the sleeve since it will keep them together. Some architectural prints like cyanotypes or diazotypes and some fabrics such as wool or silk will discolor or degrade in an alkaline environment so a pH neutral housing should be selected over a buffered housing. The last type of housing we will cover is rolled housing. It is a special case but still quite common in collections and archives. There are times when an item is too large for available shelving or map case drawers. As long as it is safe for the item, rolled storage can be an option. For rolled storage, the item is rolled onto an archival tube of an appropriate diameter. The diameter of the tube can be anywhere from 5 inches to 10 inches, 
depending on the size and needs of the item. The goal when selecting a diameter is to ensure that it is not so small that the item will end up deformed and with cockles and ridges as a result of its storage. The tube can be wrapped in archival paper or it can be padded with ethafoam sheeting and then wrapped in archival paper. The archival paper should be cut long enough to wrap around the tube several times, support the item, and have excess at the end. The archival paper serves as interleaving for the item as it is rolled. Once rolled, the tube can be tied at the ends and in the center with a cotton twill tape. This should be done tightly enough to secure the rolled item, but not so tightly that it will cause damage. Ethafoam blocks can be carved to fit the curve of the tube and placed at each end to keep the roll lifted so damage does not occur over time from the weight of the tube. Ethafoam blocks also ensure that the tube will not roll away. The tube can then be placed into a custom box for further protection. Note that items should never be stored inside of a tube since it involves rolling them tightly to do so and leaving them stored in that tight roll. It is also much more difficult and much less safe to remove an item from the inside of a tube. Stacking flat items is a common occurrence in order to fully utilize available storage space. Stacking is not necessarily bad, but there are safe and unsafe ways for items to be stacked. One instance of unsafe stacking is a tall stack. Not only do tall stacks make it more difficult to access the items, they also add unnecessary weight and pressure on the items at the bottom of the stack. Unboxed items will bear the full weight of the stack, potentially leading to spine damage, crushing, and warping. When items do need to be accessed, a taller stack means more items will be handled in order to access the necessary item. This can lead to loss and abrasions along their surfaces. Boxed items are more protected. However, it is possible that the box will split at the corners and warp. If the contents of a box are too heavy or if the weight is not distributed evenly, it becomes unmanageable, increasing the risk to other items in the stack, to the items within the box, and to the person handling the box. Stacking large items on smaller items or stacking heavier small items on weaker large items are more examples of unsafe stacking. Stacking smaller items on top of larger items is preferable to stacking larger items on top of smaller items since any overhang will eventually lead to warping. When the bottom box is fragile, or when the middle of the item is weaker than the edges, like with board games or storage boxes, placing a smaller, heavier item on top will cause that box to warp and sink, which may eventually cause damage to the contents of that box as well. To make stacks safer, try to keep stacks to two or three boxes or items. This will reduce the weight that the bottom item will experience and reduce the handling required to access one item. Still, it is a good idea to exercise best judgment to determine how the size and weight of the boxes or items will impact their accessibility and safety. The heaviest box or item should be placed at the bottom of the stack. Any unboxed items can be interleaved with foam core or ethafoam sheets to help cushion the items 
and reduce possible abrasions since the items will not be moving against each other anymore when they are accessed. In the top picture, foam core was cut and placed below each of the heavy books in order to provide more support while they are in storage and when they are accessed. Lighter items of similar size can be interleaved with ethafoam sheets as seen in the bottom picture. When items of different sizes are stacked, especially if the smaller items are heavier or if the larger item is weaker, a sheet of foam core or coroplast can be placed between them. The foam core is cut slightly larger than the dimensions of the bottom item and is placed on top. This allows the weight of the top items to be dispersed more evenly across the surface of the bottom item. If the bottom item is boxed, the foam core or coroplast allows the stronger edges of the box to shoulder more of the weight and prevent sagging in the middle. Fragile items require more care to protect. Fragile items should be boxed, placed in a tray, or tied onto a piece of coroplast or foam core with cotton twill tape so that the item can be handled indirectly by the box, tray, or board rather than by the item itself. Fragile items should only ever be at the top of a stack in order to avoid damage. If there are several fragile or heavy items, consider placing them on a shelf that has been adjusted to fit a single layer of such items. Shelving is a necessary component of any safe storage environment, but not all shelving is created equally, nor do standard shelving heights and depths serve each collection equally? There are several suppliers for shelving that offer numerous styles and customized features. Metal shelving is always preferable to wood since metal does not off-gas or burn like wood. Shelving units can be fixed, mobile along a track, open to the room, or have doors. Some shelving units contain drawers or allow for the installation of drawers. Shelving units that offer flexibility in shelf height allow for the maximization of storage space. Standalone map cases are also good to have in order to store oversized items and these come in various widths and depths just like the shelving units. Adjustable shelf heights are ideal to serve diverse collections in order to minimize wasted space and avoid unsafe stacking. When shelves are set too high, it is all too easy to keep stacking until the shelf is full. Adjusting the shelf height to fit a safe stack of two or three eliminates that option. Once shelves are adjusted to fit the heights of the stacked items, plus room to access them safely, it is possible that another shelf level or two can be added to the shelving bay. In the illustration, we went from two shelves to three, and there is still just as much space remaining to hold more items. Note that shelving heights should never be adjusted with items still on the shelves. Items can be temporarily placed onto a cart with their original locations marked so that they can be returned to their original locations after adjustments have been made. Accessibility is a large part of storage planning and deciding how to safely keep items on shelves. When possible, Heavier items should be stored in the lower half of the shelving unit so they are safer to access for both the items and the persons handling them. A general rule for placing items on a shelf 
is to leave enough room for a hand to fit above and between the boxes or items. Some boxes have pulls or handles, and while this can decrease the amount of space needed between the boxes, they should never be packed so tightly on a shelf that excessive force is required or that boxes to either side will move with the one being pulled. Shelving comes in various depths that can be perfect for standard items such as banker's boxes or upright books. It is important to make sure that the shelving depth is serving the collection items. Items that hang over shelf edges are at risk for accidents, whether it be when ladders are pushed down an aisle, when someone walks through, or when a nearby item is being accessed. Items that hang over an edge could also be receiving and causing damage to items on the opposite aisle if the shelves are mobile. When possible, items that overhang should be turned sideways if that will solve the issue, or they should be placed on a double bay, a shelving bay that does not have a back wall and instead continues through to the aisle on the opposite side. Thank you for watching. Feel free to contact us with any questions you may have, and remember to house items, practice safe stacking, interleave unboxed items, keep or adjust to appropriate shelving heights and depths.